Hey everyone, it is nine o'clock. We are live here with the LFC Fan Interactive Show on Red Men and Paul Machin. Mach, if you will. Uh, join me on this journey through all the big stories pertaining to Liverpool Football Club, uh, where we get your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on all of them. So if you've got a strong take, a hot take, a weird take, uh, then get involved by interacting with me. In the comments. If you're joining us after the fact as well, please by all means feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section. Uh, we do go back and we check, and uh, if basically means if you're a huge bell end, uh, it means we can root you out. Uh, if you're dead sound, then we'll reply to your comments and have a good chat with you. So yeah, um, plenty of uh, plenty of interactive stuff. Um, first and foremost, yeah, thanks so much to a couple of people who are in with, here with me already. Early doors, uh, Kieran Orr, for example. Um, who we love dearly. So this evening, Paul. Hope you're well. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. So just to, to peer behind the curtain momentarily before we get into the stories, um, we've got a new studio um, or a new set for a brand new version of the podcast uh, that I've been building today. Um, I'm quite excited by it. I'm going to be doing some teasers over the next couple of days for that. But uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out the podcast in a while, I highly recommend that this Tuesday coming, you check out the podcast. It's still scheduled for half ten. Uh, Tuesday morning, got a lot of work to do before now and then, but yeah, very, very good stuff indeed. Um, we have got um, plenty of stuff to get through. I'm just going to make sure I don't miss any of the comments from earlier on because uh, we've got a lot of things to talk about. Um, I want to do, first and foremost, we're going to be talking about uh, David Ornstein talking about Jürgen Klopp's uh, increased power at Anfield and get our thoughts on that. Uh, Foot Mercato's Anas Backyard. Um, says Jürgen Klopp is set for a new Sofyan Amrabat meeting. Uh, some really interesting quotes uh, from Empire of the Cop on that one, which we'll be going through. Uh, David Ornstein weighs in on the Amrabat uh, January transfer stuff as well. Uh, then we're going to be talking about a little bit of um, more athletic chat on what they think uh, some of the players involved against Man City are likely to be. Uh, we're going to talk about Josko Gvardiol, uh, who's been linked by Fichakis, uh, and they've also got a couple of other players that they linked us with as well, including Leverkusen winger Musa Diaby. So we're going to have a bit of a dive into all of those things. So yeah, come and uh, join along this whole time. Anything you want to uh, chat about, then please do let us know. We'll have plenty of time to chat a bit of wham in between all that stuff as well. Um, but yes. First uh, of all, you yes? need to do last night's question. Uh, you know what, Joe? Thank you. I do this every Every single time. Can we just say, by the way, everyone joining, because I also forget this, there's producer Joe. Hello. Yeah, we haven't done this one of these for weeks, have we? No, it's you and Aaron, mostly. Me and Aaron You've have been, been smashing the records. We have been the dream team so far. Um, no, it's a shame. Yeah, I know. Um, did you did you de-Christmas the, the gallery just out of spite? Well, yeah, I read that these lights that Aaron was using can give you, like, eye problems if you stare at them for 10 seconds which he's definitely stared at them for like three hours at this point he did have an issue where he was complaining about not being able to see but in 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 their defense in defense of the lasers there was no need for them to be pointed directly at his face he could have set them up behind him well i i, I wore sunglasses on one stream um, <laughs> it was a whole thing but then i just just thought you know i'm gonna turn them off okay <laughs> um okay what is the, was it who, who set the question it was chris brilliant well, I think it was one of the commenters, but I don't know who. Um, it was, what Man United player would you have dinner with? Uh, is it? Did he say past or present? It didn't specify. Because past? I'd quite like... You know what? I mean, it's not a player, but I would be fascinated to pick Alex Ferguson's brain. And I'd just be dropping loads of digs in about how their Champions League trophy is in the trophy cabinet at Anfield. Mainly that that's probably all. It would be like a Trojan horse conversation where I, I'm, I'm wheeling this big horse, which is effectively a nice spread dinner and, and, and pleasant you know, conversation over wine. And inside that Trojan horse is me going, ah, but your Champions League trophy's in our trophy cabinet. And, like, do, and then shoving five times in his face and then reminded him that we've won it six times as well um lfc map by the way sorry that was shout out to lfc map yeah good question uh yeah past uh, past player probably schmeichel as a goalkeeper because he's probably the best goalkeeper before allison uh, in the premier league present i ooh, it's a shame out of i would i would like to know how much of a bell in ronaldo is in real life but he doesn't play for man united <laughs> anymore so yeah, I'll have to leave that one. You're friends with Wayne Rooney now as well, aren't you? 
Okay, well, I, I had a, a passing two minute conversation with Ray Rooney. Toffee TV, a big mate with Ray Rooney. Um, and uh, Duncan Ferguson is not anymore uh, because Ray Rooney alluded to him being crap uh, on their interview. Yeah, good stuff. Check out Toffee TV's interview with Ray Rooney. Very, very good stuff. Um, Just before you move on, we've got a member chat that you won't be able to see. Rab- oh. Rabadan member for 11 months. Mbappe, two time world champion before joining Liverpool. Shout, sound, yeah. I mean, he's got to be, he's got to have the honours under his belt to really compete with this Liverpool squad. You know, you don't want a rookie coming in um, who hasn't got enough, you know, sort of silverware and medals. He wants to be able to come in and show some medals that our lads haven't won. And let's be honest, it's pretty much, you know, obviously international medals are not thick on the ground at Anfield. But uh, yeah, we've won all the domestic ones and the and the European club ones. So yeah, good. Yeah, I'll have that. I'll take that indeed. Uh, yeah, Joe, keep me posted if there's any more member chats uh, and any new members. We have got our latest YouTube members board here. Big love to uh, Edward Joseph 1808, Steve Foster, Martin Hartley and Dean Boswacher. Boswar? Warthak? Nailed that. Um... Yeah, we'll be adding any names to that as they as they come in. Also, actually, I always mention this. I forget to mention the perks. At the moment, every, Tier 2 and Tier 3 on YouTube get one extra show a week, which is the transfer show. So we do an hour-long show on a Monday, delving into all the big Liverpool transfer news in far more depth and detail than we get to do here. Um, and also, you get loads of emotes, news and live streams. And on Sundays, this show is members-only chat. Uh, we had a really good laugh with that. At the moment, I'm scheduled to do Sunday, but uh, I'm also... Having like a family pre Christmas dinner down in Leicestershire, it's a, it's a thing. Um, so it might be Chris on that show as well, just to give you a heads up. Right, questions for who's doing the show tomorrow? Stay, Steve. 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 Questions for Steve. Uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll tell you them. We'll get some good questions in, and we'll do that at the end of the uh, at the end of the show. Anyway, that's loads. Um, let's start then. Ten minutes in with our first piece of news. Um, Anfield Edition reporting uh, from David Ornstein via the Athletic YouTube channel. Talk about around the houses. Uh, Jürgen Klopp's power within the Liverpool hierarchy has now increased with the news that Julian Ward, Liverpool's sporting director, will step down at the end of the season. This doesn't feel like news, because uh, I think we all knew that. If this feels more like, like if you were going on a podcast that was listened to by people who don't really pay attention to Liverpool. This feels like a, just a statement of where Liverpool are at. Um, get your thoughts in on this because where, where the, cause I think there's a there's a little bit of an attempt at the moment to try and spin this as like Klopp's losing the plot or Klopp's being big and bad or, or whatever. Um, I don't. I, a lot of it will depend on who comes in to fill the big roles. So at the moment, Mike Gordon's stepping away from his role and he was effectively... FSG's main man link between so it kind of went the ownership group of FSG Mike Gordon and then you had would have been Michael Edwards Julian Ward and Jürgen Klopp and then obviously some of the heads of sports science and other other bits bits and people and Billy Hogan will have been up there as well for more of the business side but without a, a director of football and without Mike Gordon as close to the club Jürgen Klopp is the last sort of man standing when it comes to the real big decision makers on a football side of things. So his power absolutely has increased. Um, but how long that will be for and who we're going to get in. We had a good chat on the podcast this week actually about whether we, um, whether we, whether or not we need to get like a, a, just a powerhouse in in terms of the director of football role, uh, let me know. Uh, is this sorry, Joe? Just you just pinned. Is that you just put the super chat up there? I missed that. Was oh, it's, right? Okay, so Rabadam is throwing in. Uh, shout is this for Steve's question? Can you recommend a good hair tonic? He absolutely can't. Um, he could probably. He might be able to recommend some bad ones. Um, Joe's your man for recommending good hair tonics, isn't that right, Joe? Oh God. Uh, right. Well, finasteride will stop it from falling out. That's what I do. Okay. How do you how do Kill you know form. it's stopping it from falling out? I just trust the science. Okay, so yeah. good, good. Well, listen, there's there's not enough of that in this world, Joe. No, there isn't. That that was my main. It, it mainly activism for science. Yeah, that, you guinea pig. And definitely not because I'm going bald. Guinea pig for science. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've added a new member as well. Oh, cool. Who is the new member? Joe Fitzpatrick. Joe Fitzpatrick joins the board. Okay, Joe. Fitzpatrick. Sensational stuff. Welcome aboard. Oh, shit. Welcome aboard, Joe Fitzpatrick. 
A round of applause at home. Just put some put some clapping emotes into the uh, live chat. That'd be great. Uh, Joe Fitzpatrick joins the board, the magic board. Um, yeah, I wouldn't make too much of that, to be perfectly honest, but we can see where... Um, uh, we'll just see if there's any decent reactions to all that. Um, let's see. Oh, in fact, we had one person said Eric Cantona would be a good person to have, a, to have dinner with. Yeah, I think I'd think he'd be a decent, a decent shout, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Cameron Tilly also says, Paul... Redmen Interactive is your pre-Christmas family time. It is. You guys are all my. You guys are my internet family. Um, yeah. Um, and where in Leicestershire? Ask giggled God. I, I couldn't tell you exactly where. I because I don't know because we've ended up booking somewhere. But outside outside Leicester, it's not Bulkington. Although we do have we do know people from there. Um, it's a posh area. Uh, 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 it's very Tory is what is basically what I'm driving at here. But it'll be fine. I'll, I'll live if they don't hang, if they don't hang me by my neck um, for uh, being a, a left wing scouser. Um, then you know it'll be it'll all be absolutely fine. Um, okay, cool. Let's move things on. Then uh, we uh, are going to move on in this story. Um, this Anfield. Draw attention to this via Twitter, saying Moroccan journalist claims Jürgen Klopp set for Sofia and Amrabat meeting. Um, and this was actually from EmpireTheCop.com. Um, and they say, however, thanks to our exclusive interview with Foot Mercato's Anas Bachaka, Bachka, Bacha, Jesus. Empire of the Cop have been able to learn of the level of interest from Jürgen Klopp in the 26 year old. And the quotes are, Liverpool's coach Jürgen Klopp has met with the agent of Sofyan Amrabat, and we could also mention that his brother Nordin Amrabat, uh, who uh, I'm reliably informed used to play for Watford, uh, who has been working on his brother's career for a long time now, was also there, and they both met with the coach. It was a very good meeting. It was positive, and they will be meeting a few days after the end of the World Cup to see if the interest is the same for Jürgen Klopp. After his performances in Qatar, the interest shouldn't change, and there'll be other thing, other meetings to see the demands of Fiorentina, also the demands of his agent, to see if that transfer will go ahead or not. Now, I've never heard of this journalist, but then I haven't heard of lots of journalists, so I wouldn't put too much stock in my knowledge of of such things. Um, but I do. Um, they're quite good quotes, them aren't they? Like you I mean, they're good. They're solid. That's some solid quoting. Um, David Ornstein, on the other hand, just to quickly move this one on, doesn't seem too uh, enamoured with the idea that he's going to move this January. So uh, David Ornstein, not the Athletic, saying, uh, is Serie A club Fiorentina want to keep the 26-year-old midfielder until the summer when there will be a year left on his contract and they will aim to recoup at least €20 million Euros paid to Belgium's club Bruges for him in the same window in 2020. The likelihood of bids arriving next month of a level which might convince the Italians to alter their stance is regarded as low. If they do, the expectation is those offers will come from clubs in the lower reaches of the Premier League and would probably be turned down by Amrabat. He was strongly considered by Tottenham Hotspur in the last January window, owing to their Italian head coach Antonio Conte being a huge fan. But ultimately, they secured fellow midfielder uh, Rodrigo Bentancur instead, and Amrabat stayed in Florence. Leading clubs will want to see whether he has shown in, uh, what he's shown in Qatar continues when he returns to club football. And while the idea of a loan deal, including either an option or obligation to buy, may appeal to suitors, it's unlikely to tempt Fiorentina. So, um, yeah, Ornstein's not as keen on the idea uh, that he he will be able to move. Um, so there is that. Joe, I'm just going to put this super chat up. Do you want to just drop the um, the comments, Bing, from the bottom? Beautiful. Thank you, Joe. Um, Bruce Chua with 99 PHPs. I genuinely wish I knew what that was, but that sounds amazing. Um, you could only sign one, Amrabat or Fernandez. So, Amrabat or Enzo Fernandez. Let us know. In fact, Joe, can we do that as a poll, please? Yes. Let's do a poll in the YouTube live chat uh, where you can vote on Bruce's super chat there. What would you rather? Uh, for me, it's Enzo Fernandez. I think it's interesting because, you know, players sort of come on your radar and there was a bit of a mention in in that Empire of the Cop article about how a lot of Liverpool fans probably hadn't really heard of Amrabat too much. You know, certainly wasn't a household name before the World Cup. It, he, he certainly exploded onto the scene afterwards. Something I'm always a little bit... <sighs> I, it doesn't. I don't say scared, but I, I wouldn't. I'm wary. 
I'm wary of players who have breakout tournaments and then you go for them. The idea of letting him go back to club football and see if he can keep that level going. Because at 26, he's not going to be an unknown entity. He does. He has looked the business in the World Cup. Although there was a comment very early on in the stream um, saying that um, he's he's been rubbish tonight or whatever. So I, I can't speak to that. I didn't watch the semi-final, so I couldn't tell you one way or the other. But the... Um, it is an interesting but Do Liverpool need effectively a Thiago replacement in January or do they need someone who can fight with Fabinho? Does that influence people's voting on that? Because there's talk of it being like 20 million. That feels to me like you could get, you could pick him up without breaking the bank. And if it just means that Fabinho gets a little bit more time off, if he just plays... 10, you know, gets 10, 15 appearances, and you know, between that, whether he wants that is a different case altogether, of course. But that, I, I don't mind that, I don't mind that as a general idea. But I mean, for example, I think we're gonna see, I'll get the voting up in a second. But uh, K Bennett here, um, saying Enzo easily for me. And you know, one of the things we said on the podcast this week was Liverpool need to secure someone big and boss, and it's if you. you if you don't get Bellingham, you've got to get Fernandez, and if you don't get Fernandez, you've got to get Bellingham, and if you can get both of them, then you're going to send shockwaves through football. Um, Amrabat could be like a smart piece of business within that, but I thought it was interesting again in that Ornstein article where he talks about him a bit like that that thing of like the lower the lower tier, uh, you know, like the lower half Premier League clubs. I think that's that's a that. That's a little concern for me, you know. And that's not to say that you couldn't go from you could be a star for a bottom half Premier League club, but come and be a decent squad player at a top Premier League club. And let's be honest, Liverpool are kind of in the middle of the road Premier League side this season anyway. Um, okay, but yeah, keep your thoughts coming in. I'm going to get the poll results up, results up momentarily for that. Um, but yeah, we're going to move on in a second to do our prize draw of the day. But yes, uh, the poll is in. Um, 84% of you said you wanted Enzo Fernandez, uh, which I think is pretty, pretty clear, isn't it? And, and to be perfectly honest, I kind of expected that. Um, there is a there is a comment actually from Adam Johnson saying Enzo and oh Enzo and Amrabat or Jude Bellingham. There you go. Next poll, Joe. Enzo Fernandez and Amrabat or Jude Bellingham. Um, before we move on, uh, if you're watching this live right now, don't forget to drop a like. If you're watching it after the fact, drop a like as well. It's all good for the YouTube algorithm, which has been balls for the best part of a month. Uh, it seems to be turning the corner, but it's only really turning the corner because of the help of you guys watching, liking, and sharing the videos as well. So that's all very, very good stuff. Um, okay. Uh, we are going to be drawing our latest prize in the uh, Redman Advent Calendar giveaway. It is this. It is a Scouse, not English, um, sweatshirt. Uh, Christmas sweatshirt. It's got a bit of Trent goodness on it. One thing that, no, I don't think anyone's really pointed out. It's got this, um, which I don't know how clearly you can make it out. In fact, Joe, I'm going, I'm going rogue. Um, that, oh yeah, it's got this. It's got like Gareth Southgate with a box on his head, with a, with a bag on his head. Um, I don't know whether that's a tipping point, whether that's something you want or not. But, um, right, yeah, we're going to be doing a draw for that in a moment uh, to catch it up on why we're giving that away and what else amazing Liverpool gear is also up for grabs between now and Christmas Day. Um, here is uh, some info on our Advent Calendar giveaway. Hello, all you wonderful festive people out there. Just to let you know, we are running an incredible Advent competition on Redmen Plus throughout December. We are entering into week two. We have already given away this, an auto pen signed Mohamed Salah framed shirt, a signed Michael Owen medal, but there is plenty more awesome Liverpool themed prizes still to come. The main prize on the immediate horizon is that right there. Crown Paints retro Liverpool away shirt signed by Ronnie Whelan and by the most decorated goalkeeper in Liverpool history, Bruce Grobelar. On top of that, we've still got loads of other bits and pieces away, signed books, merch and more leading up to this on Christmas Day, the coup de gras. 
Phil Thompson, Liverpool legend, as a player and as an assistant manager, and Jamie Carragher, Liverpool legend that he sent to half, both signing a 2001 Liverpool away shirt with the FA Cup final card of 2001 stitching on it as well. An absolutely wonderful, unique piece of Liverpool memorabilia, and that is the King Dingling Prize, still up for grabs, as well as, of course, giving you access if you join and get yourself into the hat for these things by going to redmenplus.com and joining as a club legend. Uh, you're also going to get amazing content. The football is coming back very, very soon indeed, and we're going to have you covered. We've got documentaries, features, interviews, and club legends. Also get to join our Discord and get free merchandise as well. Uh, so, yeah. Not only do you get all that boss stuff, you'd also get it entered into the drawers for these incredible prizes as well. So yes, join us daily as we give stuff away. Make sure your name's in the hat by either upgrading from club captain or joining simply at redmenplus.com as a club legend tier subscriber. All the best. Hey, there you go. That's uh, all the details on that. So let's do our draw. We have got the wheel of names here, which has got every single person who is currently a Club Legend subscriber. Uh, on there, we're going to give that wheel a click and we are going to find out. Come on, there we go. Uh, who has won our Scouts Not English Christmas jumper? Ooh. Will it be someone's email? Oh, it best not be an email. Ooh. Till death do us part. Oh, there you go. Wow. It's all very wonderfully poetic. Um, yeah, there you go. Till death do us part is the winner of this little beauty here. Um, and what's cool about this actually is because of uh, of the basically the shortage of delivery drivers and what have you at the moment. And just to make a clear point on this once again, full solidarity behind all people striking at the moment, whether it's nurses or posties or train drivers and people, train workers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, don't believe all the fucking bullshit that people are pe peddling at the moment. It's shocking how quickly um, these mad hard right billionaires throw their mouthpieces out there to try and discredit normal hard work and people who just want to get other normal hard work and people a fair slice of dough for their endeavors and efforts uh in what is let's be honest a very very difficult world to live in um but anyway um i, I digress um you can't actually get those um jumpers anymore um well not in, not guaranteed for christmas on redmond merch what you can do though is you can get this and you can get the other one the clock believer one uh 20 pounds these are on sale for for the last couple of days so go to redmanmerch.com uh, right now and you can get yourself one of these but yeah big big love uh, to uh, till death to us part another draw coming up on tomorrow's show at 9pm um, okay let's move things forward then Anfield Watch Again, uh, quoting The Athletic, the likelihood is that Joel Matip and Joe Gomez will be the central defensive pairing when Liverpool face Manchester City at the Etihad on the 22nd of December. Um, that would allow Virgil van Dijk further rest before the Premier League festive period begins. The centre-back played every minute for the Netherlands, adding to his log of 5,160 minutes in 2022, heading into the World Cup, the most of any player selected as per the athletic yeah i think that makes perfect sense um i think we all would have said that you know that we when we saw we did a feature on the players going to the world cup but more importantly the players not going to the world cup who was going to be in dubai doing that training camp with jürgen klopp and what did that mean for the for the games we got a little sense of that uh, against leon i think we'll get a greater sense of it on friday that friday team is going to be much much closer to the team that starts Man City and it's going to get a bit more probably than than half an hour, 45 minutes. Joe Matip and Joe Gomez are the two senior centre-halves who are going to be fitters. Canate is going to need a bit of a bit of time to recuperate slightly long. You know, he's going to be back later than Virgil, literally, as well, because he's now, we now know he's going to the final, right? Yeah, he's going, he's going to the World Cup final. Whether he plays or not is, is to, to be seen. But he, um, it's the three. It's between Matip, Gomez... And uh, Nat Phillips, really, isn't it? Unless someone's going to come in out of the cold. There was talk that Billy Cometio's deal had been cancelled, but I don't think he, he's gone on that Dubai training camp. Not that I've seen anyway. So, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And uh, not really huge news, but if both of them are fit, you could see very clearly how they would um, 
they would absolutely be uh, the people um, who are going to be starting against Manchester City in the League Cup. Yes, anyway, right, let's move things forward. Um, we're going to be doing a bit more transfery stuff. Anfield edition, tweeting this one, quoting Fijaches Net. Uh, Liverpool are one of the sides keen on signing RB Leipzig defender Josko Gvardiol. Uh, one of Klopp's main objectives being to refresh the defence. Uh, we can get this wonderfully translated. Uh, for Jackers, have got a number of players. In fact, they're keen on, on highlighting the fact that there's three stars that Liverpool want to sign. Number one being Jude Bellingham, uh, claiming Jürgen Klopp's main objective is to secure the arrival of the English midfielder from Borussia Dortmund. Um, Cody Gakpo is number two. Uh, another of the sensations of the World Cup in Qatar has been the Dutch striker, who became the great protagonist of the Netherlands before their confrontation against Argentina. Um, 18 goals, 18 assists in 34, so it's not surprising that after Diaz's injury, which aggravates the problem in attack, Gakpo was one of the wishes of the team and field. And as mentioned there, the last player is Josko Gvardiol. The central defender is starring in a great World Cup alongside the Croatian team. Um and he's one of Klopp's big targets. Is the twenty is the barely twenty year old uh, to renew the defensive plot, and he could try to secure his signing in January. This feels like uh, this kind of player would very much be on our radar, very much be on our radar. However, I can't see how Guardiola is a priority in in January. That mean that feels like it would be a weird uh, a weird decision to take. Um just to give you an update on the poll, so the question was asked Enzo and Amrabat or Bellingham and Bellingham was absolutely pissed it with a grand 80% uh, of our YouTube poll right there. So there you go. Um thoughts then if we got a couple of comments on some of the stuff that we've seen uh, we've talked about previously uh, one here from x underscore z's channel what do you think of marker reporting enzo fernandez's release clause to be set at 77 million euros 66 million lower than the reported 120 million euros i, I think it was actually well i think it was reported 130 million euro wasn't it but um that seems more like it to be to be honest you know i, I can't it's still not. It's still a lot of money, isn't it? You know, £66 million would still make him far and away the most expensive midfielder Liverpool have ever bought. But it would... It is a weird world whereby if he's seen as being the other top midfield star that's maybe available for transfer in the, in the coming windows and you can get him for £66 million, Liverpool are very good at doing the comparison shopping and they're very good at saying, in buying and selling, well, how are you setting your price for a player? Here's how we think it should be valued because this player's moved for this and this player's moved for this. So if you buy Enzo Fernandez for 66 million, then it it might actually make your conversations with Dortmund a little bit more, like give you a bit more of a bargaining position because you're saying, well, look, there's another lad who's right at this sort of level, starting in World Cups and playing playing a good level at level of footy, playing in the Champions League, and he's only worth 66 million, so. Can you use that to maybe drive the price <laughs> lower? Probably not, but that very, that's very much what Michael Edwards would have done anyway. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting point that if, that if that did get down to a more manageable level, it would be interesting to see what whether they did move uh, whether they did move on that or not. Um, we did have a super chat in from Liam Farrell, who just apparently just wants to drop us 279 I guess, Canadian dollars, CADs for it thank you so much Liam you're absolutely wonderful um yeah uh on the Guardiol stuff then I'm gonna try and find we've got loads of comments here oh that's another one uh, uh ox free cater less than 10 minutes I've clearly missed the conversation there uh do, 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 do. right let me just quickly find one or two. Oh yeah there you go that's a good point yeah sorry people saying ox and cater we sell ox and cater we only pay about 20 30 million I mean that's the that's the point about um I think that, that was the point about it both of them contracts are up now what you would do is you would try and either use cater as make weight now or you sign Cater down to a new contract. As I mentioned on Sunday, and a few people rolled their eyes, I could feel the eye rolling from through the internet. Um, and then you've reserved a bit of value on it, and then maybe you move him and, and make him part of it. I don't know. Um, it is an interesting point, whatever. Um, okay. Oh, uh, Neve actually makes a point um, here, which I just need to point 
um, how to use. Hi, Paul. Hope to see you at the Simicast event on Sunday. You won't see me at the Simicast event on Sunday, um, but I, Chris and Steve will be there. Um, so Costa Simicast is launching a line of his own uh, designer gear. Uh, with in partnership with Hotel Anfield, uh, we're going to be doing part of the event. Red then are down for the event. I think James Pierce is there as well. Tickets are available if you go to Hotel Anfield's Twitter and get involved. You can hopefully meet uh, Costa Shimicast this Sunday, which would be very, very cool indeed. Um, so yeah, I'm deeply sorry that I can't, I won't be there. But yeah, as mentioned, festive, festive family fun, festive Tory family fun. Um, Tom Corno uh, saying on Gvardio, he did say he was a Liverpool fan. And it was his, I guess, dream to play for Liverpool. Yeah, that sounds cool. I can deal with that. Uh, and cool, yeah. And he said, ah, it'll be nice to see them both. Very excited. Yes, absolutely. Um, cool. Good shouts. Um, good shouts so far. Uh, the Gvardio stuff, I'll have to see. Right, we'll move things forward once again. Uh, and Fichajes have been talking about Moussa Diaby. Not in a very great amount of detail, I'll be perfectly honest with you, but it does say some names that Liverpool is considering for the attack. Um, it says, uh, very important names in the current football scene are handled at Anfield, such as Cody Gappo, as already mentioned. However, the Dutch striker is waiting to resolve the paperwork with Man United, very advantaged in the negotiations. On the other hand, names like Marcus Toram or Moussa Diaby, both in the Bundesliga, have also been noted on the list of possible players, as have other less proven players, such as Mudrik, whom Arsenal follows closely. And I've seen his name link with Arsenal far more than us. That would be a bit of a surprise, but it does. I think we'll see this now in the next week or so or coming weeks, with Diaz's injury confirmed, we had a big old chat about why Liverpool need to maybe go and get one more for the forward positions. What are your thoughts on that, uh, watching Marcus Toram, Moussa Diaby, um, Cody Gakpo? They all feel to me like a level below what we need. Um, and I wonder whether it's worth us. Would you, want, would you rather give the game time to a bunch of kids like Doak? And uh, Kay Gordon's a while away from fitness yet, yeah, I'd guess, or sharpness, certainly. But Gakpo, uh, Gakpo uh, but uh, Ben Doak, Christ, it's Kay's. Um, ben Doak, Harvey Elliott, Fabio Carvalho. Would you rather see them all get more chance in the front three, or would or would someone like the, the two players mentioned there, would that be more, um, more up your street? Let me know. Um, let me know on that. Um, yeah, I'll do a little bit more on Musa Diaby in a second. Uh, I've got a little bit of his stats, and I'll have a little bit of a closer look at him. But get us your thoughts in on him uh, right now in the comments. I am going now, though, over to the subscriber map. So let's head over to the board. Yes, sounds. Ah, I need to find my list. Um, as always, if you have become a Redmen Plus subscriber uh, since the show last night and uh, then we'll get you on the board what we've been doing is we've been having we've, been, we've averaging out about 10 um 10 a day we found that there's been too many people signing up shock well was us um so we've been splitting them over a couple of days and having a bit of a rolling cycle so if i don't read your name out tonight it doesn't mean that you've been forgotten uh, it means you're going to be read out tomorrow night is, is generally the rule of thumb on that we've got i believe 10 to get through right now um we've got three club captains and seven club legends Excellent stuff. So, as seen on the, the key here, green is club captains. That, just to let you know, if you're not familiar with this, club captain is effectively, you get all the content, so you get all the videos and you get all the podcasts. If you join as club legend, there's loads of extra perks, so you get 20% discount off all the, the merch on the Redman store. You get, if you join up as a monthly legend throughout the year, you get two codes sent here, giving you free merch. If you join today as a, as a yearly, you'll get the two codes instantly to get you to get your free merch. You get our Discord, which we ref refer to a lot on the shows, and you get free live show tickets and all that kind of stuff. We had a boss party at the end of the mid-season, and it, all the people who came were all club legends who got free tickets because it was boss. Anyway, um, right, Joe, ha ha how is your geography? It's better than yours, it's been proven. It's been. Is it better than Aaron's? Because Aaron's taken a lot of flack. Oh, it's been better than Aaron's. I've taken no flack whatsoever. Zero. Yeah. I, I think that I think you might be telling me only from my dad. Okay. <laughs> Sad. Right. Okay. Dada, six nineties in Dublin, uh, and Dublin's in this little pile here, right? Yeah. Cool. So I'm just. I mean, it, it's, he's going to end up in, right in the middle of Ireland because we've got a lot of Dubliners involved. But mm. you're in that pile there, Dada. Thank you so much. 
uh, J1. 330 is from Lancaster, UK. So Lanc Lancaster's up the coast from us, right? Yep. But how far up? Do you know where Blackpool is? I mean, again, I, I can't really see what's going on on this coast in general. Yeah. Would I be, is this it's too far honest, up? Yeah, that's yeah, that's too far. So, well, down so here. it's more where that green pin already is, like that furthest one up. This I'd, one? Yeah. Okay. I'll put it slightly to the left of that. Okay. Super. Let me put that in there then. I've been to Lancaster. Nice place. We watched... Um, Faulty Towers, like a, like a dive dining experience thing. If you ever see one of them, it's wild. It's really good fun. Uh, Archie English is in Weir, New Hampshire, USA. Another club captain. No idea on this. Where's New Hampshire, mate? Uh, fuck's sake, I've just closed the tab. He's just closed the tab. <laughs> Mister, my geography's fine. My geography's <laughs> better than yours. How good's your geography when you've not got your tab open, Joe? <laughs> it's, it's pretty good, but it's it's... It's in that pile of stuff on the the US. Yeah. On the East Coast. Yeah. Uh, well, how high? High, very high, almost Canada. It's, no, that's that is Canada. No, that is still Canada. Keep going down, and then right, 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 right. In the sea. Up. We're in the Atlant We're in the Atlantic. It's about there. Okay, we can't actually get that in there because we've got a a firm enclave of club legends in there. So I'm just gonna just gonna drop you in there, but. Right, sound. Thank you so much, Archie. Right, S Alexa or Salexa 17 is from Fjerdingby, Norway. As a club legend, brilliant. Fjerdingby, Norway. Yep, just outside Oslo. <laughs> That's what. Um, but is, Norway, is Norway this side? No, other side. Damn it. Yep, south coast of Norway. Yeah. Where that yellow pin is. Yeah. No, south coast. Down here? Yeah, it's there. Right here? Yeah. Lovely. Fierdingby. You need to start doing the never eat shredded wheat like Chris. Yeah, I know, I know. Never eat shredded wheat. No. Okay, so. Um, Watty is in Liverpool. Well done. As is Smudge9877. Liverpool is pretty well subscribed at this point. Um, so, yeah, we're all we're, we're spilling over into the Irish Sea at this point. But don't worry, we're going to get you both in there, both Watty and Smudge. I genuinely thought we were, we were being a bit funny with how big we'd made the UK, but in hindsight, I mean, Russia feels like a bit of a waste of time, doesn't it? Um, so I don't mean that. Sorry. Don't kill us all. Um, Omk, Omk19 is in Patan, Chattiskar, India. Mm. Bracket centre of India. Uh, I don't know where India is, so, you, you know. Is yeah. it this India? That is India. Well, yes. Um, right, there's th I think there's two patterns because I've got a different one. But, yeah, okay, so... The wing, I think it says centre of India, but it's more like centre and then right a bit. So keep go up, uh -huh. yeah, and then right. Yep. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Christopher is in Northampton. Which is Midlandsy, right? Mm -hmm. um, is this is this Birmingham here? Yep, it's just southeast of Birmingham. Southeast of Birmingham. Okay. So right down, what down here? Pretty much, yeah. A bit, bit more right, maybe. A bit more right. Wow. Yeah, yeah, like there. Lovely. Cripes. Okay. Uh, Shane Ham um, is in Cork Island. Is Cork? We've got a couple in Cork. Right at the bottom of Ireland. Bottom of Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This that's, here? that's the one. Yeah? Yep. Bear in mind, the Irish... I mean, if one thing that's unified Ireland is how much they hate us getting things slightly wrong on the map. Yes. I mean, there's nowhere near the border. It's the shared relationship with America that Ireland's yes. got as well, to be fair. Um, right. Um, Slinky is in Leighton Buzzard, Bedfordshire, UK. No idea. <laughs> it's just north of London. Okay. So, probably where that, f you think of where London is, and then that further sort of green one up. This? Yeah. Cool. Around there. There we go, Leighton Buzzard. Um, big love to Josh, uh, DJ Fardy, and Liverpool666, who will be getting your pins and shout outs tomorrow. So, all the best for you. Right, cool. Uh, let's head back over. I got uh, Rick rolled in a big way on a um, 
on a Twitter video uh, today and it's been stuck in my head. So, unfortunately for all of you, now it is for you too. Um, yes, as mentioned uh, plenty of times and places before, if you want to get your name on the board, you'll notice, and I've mentioned this previously, we did a free month code last week. Uh, it was a, a limited time offer. So everyone who used that code is a, currently a white pin on the board. Uh, so if you want to... Um, if you want to get your full pin, proper pin and shout out, then obviously when your month ends, if you choose to subscribe, we'll, we'll, we'll upgrade you on there as well. Um, some good, uh, some good comments. <laughs> um, Adam Johnson, hopefully not that one. Uh, although he, he's probably got something, he's probably got a lot of time on his hands. Um, Ball Mage Machen has been sanctioned by Putin and can no longer enter Russia. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, to be fair, that's all I get. That's probably, probably absolutely fine. Um, and Bruce, Bruce Chua is saying, uh, don't apologize. That was hilarious. Thank you so much, mate. Um, Patrick Westmore, um, saying. Uh, well done, Paul. Thank you. Thank you so much. I try. I try my best. Um, and yeah, that pin in Scotland uh, says uh, Chris uh, McAvoy. That pin in Scotland, it might as well be in the North Pole. It's a long way away. Um, is that the one? Oh, yeah, the one right at the top. <laughs> the one right at the top. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Very good. Um, cool. Keep your thoughts coming in on the stuff that we have discussed, um, and we've got we'll go, we'll go through all them in, in, in due course. But yeah, so I want to go back to the Musa Diaby stuff um, very very briefly. Uh, in fact, I will do. I realise that there's another there's a, one more box I have to tick before we do this. Um, I, I've become very aware of this because obviously it's Christmas and we're getting overexcited and we've got amazing jumpers and we've got loads of things going on. Liverpool coming back, uh, we maybe haven't been on the nose enough about how incredible our new series is on Redmen Plus. It is my Liverpool debut, so over the last sort of 18 months, we've been interviewing former Liverpool players. And, you know, we do this quite a lot, and there'll be plenty of times where you have a wide range of interview or you'll do a little snippet on what's something that's happening currently. But Stay actually came to me with an idea. It was originally pitched as a book idea, and it might yet turn into that. For my Liverpool debut, it was just drill down to one game of football, speak to an ex-player, who's pulled on the red shirt to Liverpool and got and find out about that game, do the research, and then what we blew that out to was is find out about the culture of the city of Liverpool. What was the culture in the country like? What was like what was big at the movies? What was big you know in, in the charts? What were people doing? What was it like? And not just playing in the game, what was it like in the build up to the game? What advice did you get and what kind of cool things happened around? What was it like becoming a Liverpool player, how did that change their lives? So we sat down, we managed to pick up six former Liverpool players and they range from absolute club legends like uh, Jamie Carrigan and Phil Thompson uh, and Bruce and Bruce Grobelar and, and to slightly, you know, lesser lesser lights, but all the same, guys who've had a, had a role to play at Liverpool Football Club. So, obviously, Neil Mellor has a, a pivotal role to play in the build-up to the Istanbul 2005. Uh, Martin Kelly, uh, comes in under the Rafa Benitez era as well, and obviously still playing professional football now. Brilliant of him to give give his time. And another, you know, he's, he's, he's a Western lad, so he's a local lad and a great love, great love for Liverpool. Um, and Jim Beglin as well, who, who played in one of the great Liverpool teams in the mid eighties, but had his career cut wildly short, and now he's one of the best colour commentators in, in the business as well. So we really went in depth on this. We've got Mark Morrigan, uh, who uh, people will know from stage and from screen, from things like Dream Team and from um, he's in Brookside and he, he's been on the stage a couple of times locally. He did, don't, he'll never walk alone. He sang and, and, and acted in the star and role in that. And he was also most recently the voice of the narrator on Thomas the Tank Engine, which is just cool stuff. So we got him doing the voiceovers. Anyway, it's brilliant. I, I can't stress enough. And here's the trailer for it. Have a little look. If you've not got onto this yet, it is more on that. Back in the day, everybody got chances, you know. I, I was following in the likes of you know, Chris Lawler, Jerry Byrne, Tommy Smith. You know, there was a core, Cali. So I was following in a, in a good core. So it was, it was a great time. And it really was being a local lad, trying to make your way. When you become a certain age through the academy, you get tickets to, to go to the game. So all the European nights, you'd go religiously to, to learn how the, the first team would play and the atmosphere was was always special. I, I, I do remember, you know, the, the flags up in, in the cop that as, as you walk out, you do see them and the You Never Walk Alone song is uh, it's just a special song in it. Like whenever 
you do it as you're walking out. But I know Sammy Lee used to play it before in the dressing room before we went out as well. I was always fascinated by you know Roy Evans and Ronnie Moran who were there at the time when I broke into the team. That what they'd been through with Bill Shankly and Bob Paisley, and what they'd seen in terms of you know league titles and European Cups and. You know, just listening to them, you know, the words of wisdom that they'd come out with. And I think I was lucky to get that little bit of a uh, shankly, if you like, and, you know, the old boot room. Now, I think Liverpool as a football club are really benefiting from having a good relationship with the first team and the academy. But for us, we were on different sites. We were in Kirby, the first team at Melwood, which obviously that brings its own challenges, that distance. But there was a clash between Stevie Highway at the top of the academy and sort of Gerard Hooley, the first team manager, which it felt it was harder for us to get that chance to go down and train. I came there and I took over from the best goalkeeper in the world. And I thought, wow, Bob Paisley must have seen something in me playing for Crew Alexander. But he only came to watch me in a warm up, 20 minutes with an umbrella. And then I signed. I can remember Benfica in the European Cup. I can remember sitting on the bench, I'll be honest with you here, even though I was kind of champing at the bit and wanting to play, the atmosphere that night and the hostility we experienced as a team, even on the way in, I remember thinking, I don't think I'm ready for this yet. A brand new six-part series, Friday, 5pm. Hi, welcome back. Um, sorry, my, my wife just sent me a TikTok of the comparison between different types of couple when they get out in the bed when the other one's asleep, and it's a, it's a quite a it's a, it's a little bit of an old gag, but it's a new it's a new TikTok and like how the fellas creep around and make sure they do everything in their power to be as quiet as possible. And women are just like an atomic bomb going off, and it could not be more apt for my life. Uh, so thank you very much, baby, if you're watching for that. You've absolutely nailed. Uh, you found a TikTok that absolutely encapsulates that particular element of our relationship. Um, are you the noisy one or the quiet one in your relationship? Let us know in the comments. Um, and also, we've just discovered during the break that Joe's had... Uh, how long has your stopwatch been running for? 504 hours. <laughs> and I, I must have just forgot to turn it off. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, right, Sal, um, as we said, he's, he's, he's clear. Whatever he's been trying to keep doing, he's, he's, he's absolutely it. smashing it. it yeah. You're clearly setting some sort of record there, whatever that is, mate. Um, so yeah, do go and check out uh, my Liverpool debut. Uh, by the the, the, last, the last couple of parts are coming out in the build-up to Christmas as well. We've also got uh, Liverpool dream teams where we chat to notable Liverpool fans again at all sorts of levels of fame, celebrity, influence and notoriety uh, and ex-players as well. Chat through there, the best Liverpool players they've ever watched or they're in their lifetime or in the instance of football players that they've played with. So Mark Wright played centre half for Liverpool. His episode's being done at the moment. Um, and we've also got Jay Spearing as well. He came in this week. They're both coming in around the Christmas period. Um, Jay Spearing's team fuck me it is something else um, so yeah make sure you stay tuned for that and as mentioned we've got a a, a brand new revamp podcast coming on Tuesday as well so very good um, just a few comments um, Chris McAvoy saying uh, and nice of you to say just that I'm signing up because I need more of the uncut videos they are class yeah absolutely the Red and podcast extra is one of the best things we do uh, it can be brutal at times um, uh, Dave Wood says thoughts on X red John Scales. I don't have any thoughts on John Scales. I, I, I think I didn't really pay much. All I remember is we had loads of centre-halves at one point in the 90s under Roy Evans, and we played three at the back, and we weren't very good defensively. So I remember a lot of those centre-halves being kind of ruined by association for me, so I never really had a great opinion of a lot of them. So like Scales and Bab and Ruddock and Harkness... Um, Dicks, well, he's more of a left back when he came in, but you know there was a ton of the, the kind of centre halves around that time, and they never really nailed it the way that the ones had previously or ones that would come afterwards, like when Sammy Hippier comes in and Carragher starts to be moved towards centre half and such. But um, I don't know. I, I, is there any reason why I should have a strong opinion? Do let me know on that one. Uh, Julian Farnfield Sykes, uh, in reference to my uh, accidental Russian slander, says be careful touching your doorknob. I have to be honest, I forgot the context in that, and I thought that was something sexual. Um, but yeah, that is that is very, very true. And Adam Johnson's back um, saying, uh, check on the car tonight, Paul. 
Yeah. And to be fair, it's so cold that I was going to say, oh, the weather might put them off, but like the Russians are bang up for it, aren't they? Like, you know what I mean? You know, if it wasn't cold in Russia, the world the world landscape would be very, very different, wouldn't it? Um, right. Sound. Um, let's have another couple of looks. Oh, yeah, that was it. I was going to talk about Musa Diaby. So I've got his um, transfer market stats page up just to have a look at him. Uh, he's 23 years old. He'll be 24 at the end of the season. He's a le- it's, a, it's got him nailed as a left winger, but so far this season, he's made 16 appearances on the right, three on the left, two as a second striker and one as an attacking mid. Most played and therefore most prolific on that right-hand side where he's played 16 times, scored eight goals and got three assists. Um, he's played 22 appearances all in, uh, eight goals, four assists for that. He's made six Champions League appearances as well for Leverkusen, getting two goals. Um, at some point, we're going to have to buy someone who can come in and, and help Mo Salah get a bit more game time off on that right-hand side. I feel like... Jota could do it, could have done a bit of that, but we're obviously not seeing that. So, as much as I don't think we need a right winger in the in the January transfer window, it is really interesting to see um, players being linked with that. That feels it feels a wild one. I can't really see that being the case. To be perfectly honest, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, right, we had a good comment here. Uh, thank you so much uh, to Paul Byron. I'm just going to say, I've been watching Redmen for years ever since I recognised your old man from the cop in the late 70s and 80s online with you. Uh, legend in the cop at YNWA Redmen TV. Yeah, I can't wait to get my dad back in. He's not been, he was a bit poorly a month or so ago um, and he's not been able to go to the matches because of it. So hopefully he's doing a little bit better. Hopefully he can chill out a bit over Christmas and then when the footy comes back, he can get back into the swing of things. So yeah, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, that would be that would be nice if he could do that because yeah, yeah, he obviously loves it. Um, Manuel here, big love, um, mate, love your jumper. Thank you, Manuel Fernando Cachata San Juan. Uh, muchas gracias. Uh, yeah, this is one of the two designs that we've currently got an offer on redmenmerch.com for twenty quid as well, which is absolutely amazing. They're the last few items that we're guaranteeing delivery, um, the UK delivery on as well. Um, and I'm I'm gonna overlook the um this the the burra slander that we're getting in the comments, um, <laughs> and also the Curtis Jones slander as well. Um, yeah, sounds right. Um, do, do, do. oh Tom Corn, I'll just ask you a question. Uh, in fact, we'll ask this as the question. I think we, we maybe pass this as a question on to, in a sporting sense for Steve maybe tomorrow. Um, would a loan Pulisic be such a bad idea? Well, if they'd let him go to us. Now, you know, I tell you what, can we ask two questions of Steve tomorrow? Let's ask him about Pulisic because okay. you know, he's, he's primed for a really big opinion on certain players as our Steve. Mm. And do we have any other interesting random shit, Joe, for him? The only one I've seen was the hair tonic one. I just I feel like we're really it's a really low bar. Pokemon, Steve's bald. We all get it, right? Get it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Come on, guys. He looks like an egg. Let's grow <laughs> up a bit. <laughs> if you turned his head upside down, he'd look like he had hair. You know, he's got an upside down head. Um, he's great. We love him. He, he is. He is. He's, he's a sexy bald man. I think there's a lot of people who forget that. There's a there's a big. There is a big um, market for the sexy ball man. Um, here's a question. Uh, Sandra Marianne, do you play fantasy? Why, yes. Yes, I do. Um, I prefer, like, you know, when one of us is Luke Skywalker and the other one's Leia, rescue from the Death Star. Um, and then you try to overlook the, the fact that the brother and sister and all the incest connotations of that and just focus on the fact that it was sexy prior to that being written into canon. Um, I also play a bit of Premier League fantasy football as well, which I'm looking forward to rebooting in the coming days and weeks. Is there any world where we're not having um, Haaland as captain or are we going to go back to um, Mo Salah as our Premier League uh, fantasy captains? Let me know. Right, okay, we had a super chat uh, from Shane Almond. Uh, Sick with no pneumonia, but enjoy vids. Thanks, guys. Well, Shane, get better soon, my friend. I really hope you take it easy. Pneumonia is no laughing matter. Um, so yeah make sure you do take it easy and get yourself well in time for Christmas of course my friend so yeah all the best Um, right Uh, brilliant Joe let's get some more questions for Himp in shall we I mean sorry all you have to do is not press enter there and you're laughing well I've done it before I realised our sad uh, Marianne uh, is going back 
uh, he's going back to Salah, as I think we should all do. Right, cool. Just want to draw your attention then, finally. Yeah, we've got um, Redman Plus. Dot com. Um, there's loads of stuff on there for you right now. As I say, you can get my Liverpool debut up there, but if you want to get some expert insight on Enzo Fernandez, the Nacho is there with Adam Barton from Proxima Giornada. Um, there is also uh, The Boring Future of Gareth Southgate. That podcast is also subtitled um, Booby Christmas because we discovered there's an app that shows you boobs every single day. And that, as mentioned, there's not a single person on planet Earth who doesn't like boobs. Um, uh, and obviously we did the podcast. The transfer show is more on Enzo Fernandez as well, so that's a really good show that you guys can check out. And Navos did uh, Liverpool Dream Teams this week as well. So yeah, loads of loads and loads of other stuff. You scroll down, uh, you'll be able to see uh, the Jim Beglin episode of My Liverpool Debut. Uh, you've got Neil Jones on Jano Insight. You've got loads of exclusives, German Scousers, Divock Origi documentary, European Cup stories. Um, you know, and then there's my feature with John Achterberg on the Liverpool goalkeeper mural. There is loads and loads of stuff. So if you're bored, kicking around the house in the festive period, uh, and you need some entertainment to sit and watch, or if you need to put it in your ears and ignore people, then video and in podcast form, there is that. Right, guys, you guys are absolutely fabulous. Um, that is me for tonight. I've exhausted all of our transfer uh, insight and knowledge and all that kind of stuff for now, but there will be more between now and tomorrow. So yes, uh, get involved. 9 p.m. tomorrow. Tomorrow will be stay. Come and join him uh, and have a boss boss time between now and then. You guys are absolutely fantastic. You're wonderful, Joe. You're boss as well. Thank you. We could ask Steve that. What's his favorite? What's been his favorite day of a uh, booby Christmas? Yeah. Christmas? Cool. What? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ask Steve. What's his favorite day of booby Christmas? Cool. Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful night, and we'll see you all soon. Tara. Closer to Liverpool Football Club and the amazing city of Liverpool with Red Men Plus. More content for your eyes and ears, documentaries, extra bonus Red Men shows, podcasts, features, interviews. Get close to the culture of Liverpool Football Club on Red